And we're back in the yard. So we are changing a compressor today. Uh, the compressor was pretty much grounded. Uh, so what we do is we are gonna go ahead and recover our refrigerant first. So, and I know you guys are noticing that, hey, wait a minute, your line dryer's on the wrong side. Well, that's because I just got a new one and they gave me the wrong one. So if I put it on this side, the arrow's the wrong way. So I still, I'm, I have to reuse this refrigerant. So I still wanna, I wanna filter it. Uh, so that's why I just put it on the outlet because at least it'll filter the refrigerant. It's not protecting machine, my machine at all, but it's cleaning the refrigerant of any stuff. Since I'm putting it back in there, I want it to be nice and clean. Um, so yeah, we got it all opened up and ready to go. I just gotta kick it on. And then uh, once that's done, uh, we will go ahead and start uh, removing the compressor. So as this is running, I'll be taking the top off and getting ready. So here we go. So we're getting to the end of uh, our recovery. We're at 3.9. Now keep in mind, if I were to close these valves, it would pop up a little bit. So I like to try to get as close to zero because that'll leave like maybe three PSI left. Um, and then I purge that out when I run the nitrogen through. Uh, so this unit here, uh, it's not that old, but the compressor has been changed before. I knew that because when I came out here, they still have their little rags on there. Um, that panel that's open right here, this one right here, I didn't take that off. So somebody else has been out here after me. So that's a little concerning. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be what, the third compressor that we're doing? Uh, we didn't change the last one, the installer did it. So you know, I guess it went bad after like two years. So they, the installer came back and changed under warranty. And then uh, when I came out, the compressor was dead again. And I was like, hey, uh, this compressor's dead again. It's been changed before. So I'm thinking he probably had them come out trying to get a warranty or something. Uh, but you can tell the guy's lazy. Couldn't even be bothered to put the panel back on. So that's always good. Normally I tried to change the mufflers on this. You can see that there. That's not a line dryer. That's actually a discharge muffler. Uh, but they're like back ordered. Nobody has them in stock. I'm also gonna change the run, uh, well, I was gonna change the run cap, but I couldn't find one in stock here in town, which is annoying. I don't like to use turbos, so I'm not gonna do that. I checked it, it's fine. I am gonna change the contactor though. Um, but yeah, so this is a heat pump. So basically this was a maintenance call uh, or what do you call it, a repair in disguise. So they called us for maintenance knowing that their system wasn't working. So, you know, be wary of those. But anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and finish our recovery and then we'll start getting this thing taken out. Alrighty, so we got our recover. There's about like two PSI left in there. Um, we got 7.6 uh, pounds of uh, R410A. Uh, this thing holds 8.9, so because the compressor was changed before, it's possible that the last guy recovered it, changed the compressor, put it back, and didn't top it off. So whenever you're doing a recovery, you never get 100% of it, so you always got to top it off. Uh, usually you usually got to add like a pound, maybe two tops, depending on the line set uh, length. So but anyway, uh, we got that done, so we're going to get this all taken apart. So got our half-inch uh, socket here. Go ahead and remove these four bolts. Unplug in that. And we're gonna wrap these with uh, wet towels to protect them from the excessive heat. <laughs> okay, feels like it's free. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and try to sweat that off. We'll see if we can. Worst case scenario, we'll cut it, but uh, I'll try to sweat it. And I will run nitrogen through there while I'm sweating it just so I don't add more soot to the system. So I performed a acid check on this um, I don't know if you can see these. You see these? These are the Schrader cords. They're all black. So whoever changed this out before didn't clean the system properly. Uh, now, I did do an acid check on this thing, and it did pass. But I'm concerned that there might be a little bit of something in there. So um, I'm going to put some acid scavenger in there, and I'll show you what that is in a minute. But we're going to get this compressor out first. Now I got my nitrogen set up. I have uh, both Schraders removed. I have my high side connected to my high side, and this is open to the atmosphere, okay? Uh, my low side is closed, my high side is open, all right, all the way open. I know I need to get a new knob. Um, and nitrogen's on. Now, one thing where people mess up is you'd wanna run a small amount of nitrogen while you're brazing or sweating. Anytime you're putting heat on these pipes, you wanna be doing this. Uh, so that's my braze. Then there's purge. 
And what this is doing is it's blowing any air out. So you want to do this first. So I don't know if you can hear that, but there's nitrogen coming out of there. So if there's any air in the system, it'll blow it out. It'll purge it. You want to do that first, then set it to your, your normal. Okay. If you don't do that, you might still have air trapped in there while you're brazing. So even though you're running nitrogen, if you hit it before the nitrogen actually displaces that oxygen, you're going to get oxidation, which is that black stuff. So uh, always purge it first. That's why these have a purge setting. Mine's old and it's all rubbed off, but there's braze, purge, and test. So braze is for obviously a low pressure to for brazing. Purge, it's not as high as test, but basically it's just a little bit just to purge out any air. And then test is, you know, full blast. So yeah, I just thought I'd talk about that. So let's get this uh, compressor out of there. All right, I was able to sweat the discharge with the suction line. I had to cut it off. The guy just used way too much solder. Um, so anyway, we're gonna pull it out. Compressor out, I went ahead and plugged with two pipes. I'm gonna uh, vacuum out all this debris since I got the compressor out of the way. You don't really have to, but it's just a nice touch when you're doing this thing. All right, new compressor. Uh, this should be under pressure, so when you pop these out, it should uh, shoot out a little pressure. Nice. And it shot out a little compressor oil, and the reason why I did that uh, was because somebody tipped this compressor on its side at some point. So, yeah. So that's going to be fun. Now it's going to choke me when I'm burning this thing. Uh, so anyway, we got this stuff here. Uh, you're supposed to use that to inject it, but uh, I'm just gonna since the compressor's open, we're gonna dump it into the uh, we'll dump it into the suction line. All right, new compressor's in place. We put that acid scavenger into the suction line, just dumped it in there. Um, I think the previous guy cut it because it was really short, and I only was yeah. So anyway, um, I just added a piece. Um, I just wedged one side and then shoved it in there. So. I know it's double brazing, but there just wasn't enough piping and I had no wiggle room. I would have really had to bend the pipes to make it reach and I didn't want to do that. So anyway, let's get this thing brazed up. We're going to start up our nitrogen. Right, so I ended up removing that, uh, that low pressure, uh, sensor, this guy right here. Just, I don't want to overheat and it's in the way. Um, I tried to pull the shredder core out of there, but it doesn't look like it's a removable shredder core. So I'm going to wrap that with a cold towel. And then we'll wrap that other one too. I'm going to start with the suction line since there's two points and it's a bigger pipe. So I have to heat it up more. I got my nitrogen going into my suction line that way. It's more of direct. And then I'll probably switch it over when I do the uh, discharge line. So yeah, we're going to braze in our new line dryer as well. I'm going to put a uh, wet towel on this side to prevent the heat from getting the metering device or the TXV. We completed our pressure test. It held pressure like a champ, no leaks, just let out the nitrogen. Gonna hook up our uh, vacuum pump and start the vacuum. I can probably clean up whatever I don't need. Go to lunch, come back, charge it up, and it should be good to go. All right, so we're back from lunch. We're at like 257 microns. Uh, so I would say that's good. We're gonna go ahead and charge up the refrigerant. I'm gonna use the vapor side and flip this upside down. I like to do that because it gets the, you know, gets everything out of there. Um, and then we'll do the difference with the brand new refrigerant. So anyway, let's get this thing taken off. All right, so we're trying, uh, we need 8.9 total. So I'm using my recovered refrigerant. Uh, we're at four pounds so far. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm, I got like 7.6, I think, out of it. So I'll probably stop it at seven and then we'll top it off with fresh refrigerant. Right, so it's about 80 degrees, so our target sub cools nine. I just turned this on, so it's still settling, but it's it's eventually going to be nine. Superheat's about five. Pressures are a little low, but it's cold inside, so I think we're good. Well, she's cooling at a 22 degree uh, split between supply and return, uh, so she's good to go. So hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment to me, little horrible technician man. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for watching.